Hi, welcome back to Educator.com. This is the lesson on vision. Before we talk about the eyes themselves, we need to look at, at the accessory structures uh, that are around the eye, that have to do with the eye, uh, protecting them, allowing them to function properly. First, the eyebrows. Uh, these are one of those areas that we've retained a lot of thick terminal hairs from our mammalian ancestors. Um, of course, they're really concentrated on the top of the head, but if you ever wondered why do we have a lot of hair still right here, part of the reason is just expression. Uh, being able to, you know, see someone's eyebrow movements with respect to um, their their facial expressions is important for the socialization that humans have. But beyond that, in terms of protecting the eye, when you sweat a lot above the brow, the sweat will tend to get caught in these hairs and prevent a lot of it from coming into your eyes. Now, if you sweat a lot, you're not going to be able to prevent all of it, but that's a nice um, function of eyebrows. The eyelids, the, the technical term being the palpebrae, um, you know, they're made up of skin, muscles, uh, a very, very, very tiny bit of fat. Uh, but you can think of those as like windshield wipers. Every time you blink, they get a little bit of fluid over the surface of the eye, helping to clean the eye, lubricate the eye, protect the eye. And of course, you know, you have that automatic reaction where you blink if something comes to your face really quickly. Uh, so that's important in terms of protecting the surface of the eye. Eyelashes also protect the eye. Uh, they prevent a lot of dirt, microorganisms, uh, little bugs that we don't notice from coming into the eye itself. Um, eyelash length is, is mainly genetics, unless you're um, you know using some kind of product to uh, accentuate them. Uh, an interesting thing about eyelashes is the tarsal glands. The tarsal glands are a modified kind of sebaceous gland. Now, sebaceous glands are um, associated with hairs in general, but the modification of the tarsal gland makes it so that there's even more of a lipidy kind of fatty secretion uh, that comes out with the eyelashes and uh, not only um, kind of protects them, but it also uh, makes it so that they don't clump together. It helps keep them separated. So those tarsal glands associated with each uh, little eyelash you have, sometimes they can get infected. Sometimes a little bit of bacteria, dirt can get into them. Uh, they can get inflamed. And as a result of that inflammation, you can get what's called a sty. So if you ever heard somebody say that they had a sty on their eye, uh, it's because of the tarsal glands getting inflamed. Uh, skeletal muscles. You have six extrinsic muscles attached to the outside of the eye. On the next slide, you're actually going to be able to, uh, to see those a little bit better. You can't see them just by looking at someone's face, but behind the eyelids, uh, attached to the white part of the eye, you have all of these skeletal muscles. And of course, they allow you to move your eyes all over the place. The conjunctiva is a layer that's around the surface of the eye, and it also curves up on the underside of the eyelids. Uh, it's made up of a lot of epithelium that's meant to protect the eye. It's just another form of protection. And when it's healthy, um, when it's not infected, you don't really notice it. But when you get conjunctivitis, the infection of the conjunctiva, also called pink eye, it's very noticeable, and because of that infection, you get dilation of all the blood vessels, you get uh, swelling in that area, and it can be very irritating, uh, very annoying, and that happens because of, you know, it just could be um, irritation of that layer of that tissue, it could be a bacteria or a virus that's making that happen, and um, generally, it's something that's, uh, that's only going to last uh, several days. The lacrimal glands, um, if you remember from the skeletal lessons, uh, there's a lacrimal bone, um, and it comes from Latin word that has to do with tears, like lagrima in Spanish. Um, so the lacrimal glands, they are those um, tear producers. The lacrimal gland itself is about the size and shape of an almond, and um, they are located in this region uh, of the eye. You're producing about a milliliter of, of tears per day. Uh, of course, you can go beyond that if there's a lot of crying going on. But um, even when you you know go the whole day without shedding a tear, you're still producing tears. They're just not exiting the eye. Um, every time you blink, you get a little bit of that fluid um, going over the eyeball. The nasal lacrimal duct is what leads those tears 
out of this area and through the lacrimal bone and part of the maxillary bone into the nasal uh, conche, the nasal cavity. You have this thing that's nicknamed a lacrimal lake with each eye, and it's kind of like uh, a space for excess tears to hang out in. If that lacrimal lake gets overflowed with tears, they're going to come out the eye. So the act of crying, you're producing so much uh, of those tears that that lake overflows, your nasal lacrimal duct isn't able to, to drain all of it out in those moments, so they're going to come out the eye, down the cheek, etc. Um, the duct, since it takes tears down into the nasal concha area, that's why when, when you are crying a lot, uh, you're gonna get the, <laughs> you know, like, like you're, you're having the sniffles at the same time because you have a lot of tears going into that region. And besides all of these, you've got orbital fat. Uh, the orbit of the eye is formed by several bones that make that, you know, classic looking uh, eye socket. And cushioning the eye all around the exterior attached to the white part, known as the sclera, you have a lot of fat. And, and it's meant to cushion. It makes sense that you want that cushioning around the eye because you have some very hard bones that are right next to that eye. So the orbital fat, nice cushioning.